This is a teaching moment. Hey guys, what's going on? It's Hesiot, and today I want to talk about a very sad topic. A topic that haunts a lot of people. The question, why is Bolster actually so bad? I've put a lot of thought into this because I tried to make it work in some decks in Wild and it just won't. And that is very weird because there's actually the, the card seems actually very strange. Just 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 look at this. Uh, just look at this buddy. It says plus two plus two to all taunt minions. Just think about it. I mean, there are other cards that are similar and are very good, like Hand of a Doll, mainly in standard, but still it's a very strong card, and in wild it sees a lot of play too. Mark of the Lotus sees uh, play it like crazy. Everybody, uh, every aggro it runs it. There is no list that runs only one. There is Power of the Wild, which also sees some fringe play, and in standard right now it's actually quite strong. So how can Bolster be so bad if these cards are so good? So the first question is, what is the strongest that Bolster can be? And you want to Bolster on turn 2 actually, right? It's a 2 mana card, and you just want to go Bolster on turn 2 and destroy your opponent with it because it's so powerful. So, what would the setup on turn 1 be? On turn 1 you go Target Dummy, Target Dummy, Vax Elemental or Shield Bearer, or Tournament Attendee maybe. And then on turn 2 you go Bolster. And all of a sudden, all of these puny little taunt minions gain plus 2 plus 2. This is plus 6 plus 6 on turn 2. So powerful. The reality is that that's a very fringe situation and most of the time you won't get that much value out of Bolster. And even if you do, it's not that great. Let me elaborate. So, the very first problem with Bolster is it's only restricted to taunt minions. Taunt minions are very heavily priced because taunt, as we all know, is cheat. And since taunt is cheat, you pay like around half a mana to a mana for the taunt effect itself. Therefore, most of the taunt minions are understated, which is actually a good thing. But that is a topic for another for another video. I'm not going to talk about that in this video. Let's let's pull up Shield of Galakrond. Shield of Galakrond is a five mana four five with taunt that invokes Galakrond. Right? We all know that card. We have been through this, all of us. So. If you compare this to other five drops in the game that kind of see play, there is uh, there are very few five mana uh, minions that see play. For example, Twilight Runner or Rodney Drake, and let me just add the five drop that makes your day miserable all the time, Jandis. Good old Jandis. All of these minions do way more. Twilight Runner draws you two cards, it has stealth, it's very hard to remove. It can be removed, but it's very hard to do so. Rotten Drake kills something on the other side of the board and is a 6-5. Very threatening, you go face with it, that's that's just insane. Jandis is so much tempo, sometimes you low roll. True, you get like a Desert Obelisk and a Egg, I, don't, I forgot about the uh, the name you, you you'll see here what what I'm talking about so that is a problem in itself that taunt minions are understated uh, there are of course some taunt minions actually in the five mana spot like Aldor Truthseeker uh, or Void Drinker that don't suffer that much from that uh, from the th drawback so Shield of Galakrond to come back to the to, to the minion we were actually talking about is not actually challenging the board. So let's recap. Most taunt minions are heavily understated. And there are quite some few that do see play because they are not understated. 
uh, I want to pull up Dreaming Drake here. Dreaming Drake is a 3 mana 3 4, which is already fine. If you corrupt it, it gains plus 2 plus 2. So it becomes a 3 mana 5 6, which is actually pretty good. And that is why it's cease play, not in aggressive Druid, uh, druid decks, but uh, more controlling Druid decks that try to come back on board. They, the, the plan is to, at the, at the beginning against aggro, you lose board and then you stabilize. For example, with the help of Dreaming Drake, because it's so cheap. Uh, another uh, minion that sees play is Aldor Truthseeker. Truthseeker is in itself already a fine minion. It's not super amazing, but the effect and the stats speak for themselves. Uh, it's just a good enough minion, and sometimes you just slam also a Librem on it, so it becomes a 5-7 that death rattles into giving you a Librium. So that minion is already pretty good. White Drinker doesn't see that much play these days, but White Drinker is actually pretty good. So it, it doesn't see that much play anymore. That is uh, also... We we're gonna talk about this in a second, okay? So White Drinker is an absolutely okay taunt minion, absolutely fine, actually quite amazing, but it doesn't see play. What are taunt minions that even do see play? Most of them are the ones that can be cheated out. First thing that comes to mind for me here is an Ubisoft Defender. And the Defender is uh, most of the time just a 0 mana 3 5, which is amazing. Right? It has taunt, it has, three, it has 5 health, that's quite a lot. Uh, as a druid you can overflow sometimes on turn 5 and put this bad boy on, on the field, have gain 5 life and have a 3-5 taunt, that's, that's pretty good and helps you stabilize. It won't win you the game, but it helps you stabilize, which will lead you to win the game. Uh, another taunt minion that sees a lot of play is Sword Eater. Sword Eater on the surface doesn't have that great stats, but it actually it does because you always gain that weapon, which is a proactive play, so you can mess with the board. Uh, the 2-5 isn't that great of a body, but you gain that sword, that, or, or is it a lance or whatever, the weapon, the 3-2 weapon with which you can mess with the board. And that makes uh, a Sword Eater a very good card that is run in almost all of the warrior decks these days. Maybe not in big warrior, but uh, in control warrior it sees play, it sees play in ETC warrior, because also the synergy of anchor. Uh, we also have one guy to talk about, which is Bone Chew Brawler. This guy is just a 2-3 with taunt, so it doesn't actually lose stats. It gains actually a lot because the, the effect is so insane in the early game. There are very few one drops, namely just Flame Imp, that can chew through Bone Chew Brawler, Brawler. And that is why this guy sees play that it doesn't really serve the purpose of protecting your face, but more being aggressive is another issue that I won't touch uh, that I won't touch in this video. Um, so if something has good stats and taunt, it sees play. Another thing to uh, to consider is, can a minion be cheated out? And the first thing that comes uh, to mind in standard is an Ubisoft Defender. Uh, other things that can be cheated out are, most of the time, you must think about Void Lord. The good old Void Lord, because it comes down on turn 5 and wild. Because there's other ways, means to cheat it out, like Skull of the Minari or Void Caller. And through the help of these guys, you can just have a Void Lord on board on turn 5 as a Warlock in Wild, which is totally insane. Uh, another uh, another taunt minion that does this is Zordrak Ritualist. So there is this spell called Oaken Summons, which you happen to have Archmage Vargoth in your deck. And Archmage Vargoth will cast this spell again and then you will have Archmage Vargov on board and a 2 and a 3-9 on top of that with Taunt. So the bad battle cry of Zoldrak, which is not always a bad battle cry because it synergizes so well with uh, with Spreading Plague, which are also Taunts, but about that later. 
is is an insane turn four play and most of the aggro decks in wild can't really handle it you can't you can't chew through that unless you have some kind of means which there are uh, another taunt minion that can be cheated out is Dread Corsair. We all remember the Evolved Charm and stuff that happened at the beginning of Dark Moon Fair due to Cage Match Custodian. And Dread Corsair was one of the biggest offenders in this deck because he just played for free. So this guy sees play, not for the taunt, a 5 drop out of it for free. Last but not least, I'm thinking about thing from below because you just totem 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 and at some point thing from below is just a zero mana minion also if you if you cheat it out on turn four that's already fine because it protects all of your other stuff and is just a great minion thing from below was uh, was hated a lot and is still kind of hated although shaman is not that strong in wild right now so tom minions see play if they have well enough stats they see play if they can be cheated out and last but not least, they see play if they have an insane effect. And I'm pretty sure that most of you think about this one guy that saved so many people during his surgeons in standard. And right now, he even sees play, a lot of play actually, uh, in wild, which is Ziliax. Ziliax has a lot of keywords, and one of those happens to be taunt, which is actually pretty good because... Uh, if if your uh, if your opponent chooses to trade into it, you gain even more life after having rushed into something. Uh, another insane effect is Dirty Rat. You don't play Dirty Rat for its taunt, but more for its insane effect of being disruptive. Uh, so you pull out a combo piece maybe from your opponent's hand or something else. Uh, another. Uh, another insane effect would be Cartoot Defender because it heals you so much. That that is why it it hurts so bad if it gets sapped or silenced or something. So there are these uh, Resurrect Priest minions like Blood of Gahoon, Obsidian Destroyer, Convincing Infiltrator, and sometimes Lich King. And these see play because they have insane effects at the end of turn effects or death rattles that uh, lifesteal in case of obsidian <coughs> and these things um, are reason enough to be put into a deck but it's outside of these you don't see any taunt minions taunt doesn't really serve the purpose that it served at the beginning of hearthstone which was just protect your face it was supposed to protect your face but right now taunt doesn't really do that anymore it's more like um, in best case it protects your board and you need something on top to be to, to see play and that is something that is that has changed with taunt du uh, during uh, evolution of hearthstone taunt is right now more reactive than proactive it used to be a proactive play because you could put a bump in your opponent's uh, in your opponent's way, but right now you play taunt more to protect something like okay you uh, still play a taunt to protect your face or most of the time it's to protect other minions. Uh, you hope that your opponent trades for you, but the question becomes but. What if the opponent chooses not to do so? Hmm. What if the opponent chooses to build up tempo while easily removing yours? I don't know, you have a sword eater on board. Uh, it gets sapped. Sap is a very big offender and I'm uh, really, really glad that it rotates out with a new core set. So, at the end of the day, uh, your taunt minion, because of the low stats, because uh, it hasn't been cheated out, because it's just a bump on the way to your face, is going to be removed very easily. So, what has this to do with Bolster? A lot actually, because Bolster relies on you being on board. It 
you need as many tones as possible. There's actually very few tones that generate more tones, so you can uh, actually take advantage of the effect of bold step. We, uh, we had a look at Mark of the Lotus at the beginning of the video, and Mark of the Lotus works because AgroDruid runs efficient minions. They take trades and are on board, and then they can still get buffed. Or you buff and then you trade. But with Bolster, that doesn't work that way, because most of the time you won't be on board. You won't have anything to buff. And just having plus two, plus two without the card draw is just not good enough in Hearthstone these days. So Mark of the Lotus works because Agadrid or Zoo, uh, which has Wicked Whispers, they are very well statted for their cost, which makes them very good buff targets too. And if they get buffed, they trade efficiently, stay on board and become a problem for another day. While with your taunt minions, they will get removed, they have taunt. They have to get removed, they will get removed, they won't stick on board, they don't have enough stats, and that is why you will never be able to bolster plus six, plus six. Or maybe plus 14, plus 14. At the end of the day, Bolster is nothing else than a win more card. Could try to build around it, but it, uh, it won't happen be just because of the poor, pure restriction of having to buff Torn Minions. Which is very, very, very sad. Thanks so much for watching. If you have any thoughts about what I just said, just put it in the comments. I'm glad to answer. Have a nice day and see you soon.